and I'm back. Yay! For more stuff. And I got my Dreamcast emulator to work. Woo! Not really much to celebrate about, but you know, look on the positive side. Could be worse. Could be far, far worse. So, uh, what have I brought for you this week? Well, uh, it's Resident Evil Code Veronica. Uh, yeah, which I have wanted to play for uh, quite a while. Oh, I couldn't get the damn Dreamcast thing to work. But hey, it's here for you now. And as a special treat to my friend Kyosel dude, uh, you know that mass zombie fight you wanted? Ken? Well, uh, here it is. For you. Well, in a few minutes. Uh, but no, Resident Evil Code Veronica. Um, it's... Uh, counted as one of the official Resident Evil games and occurs between Resident Evil 2, obviously, because it has Claire, and Resident Evil 4. And basically, though, it doesn't bridge the gap really in any way. Uh, it tells the story of what happened to Claire Redfield and Chris Re Redfield long after Raccoon City's destruction. Uh, yeah, there's going to be a full playthrough later, but I actually, A, I realised that one of my 18 videos I'd recorded was rubbish and was just another Resi 1 one that didn't have a sound, so screw that. And two, I thought, you know what? I'll make something really good. Really, you know. But I didn't, so I just recorded this and thought, hey, enjoy it if you want. Uh, yeah, sorry for the laggy footage, but um, Dreamcast... Strange, really probably didn't succeed because there weren't too many good games for it, but the ones that are good, like this one, graphics are good for a pre... 6th generation? Are we up to the ninth generation consoles yet? I don't know. Uh, but it's good for an earlier generation console, as it were. I count early pretty much everything before GameCube and PlayStation 2, which I believe are those ones where graphics become incredibly solid. Don't mind me though, I'm not a graphics sort of player. I'm more into a game that's fun, good to play, and you know, you can have fun with. Well, enough about that. Uh, so for a brief run through, basically Resident Evil Cover Veronica plays like pretty much any other Resident Evil game you've ever played, part 4 and 5, 4 being good, 5 looking like Gears of War. I'm being honest, it does. Uh, so yeah, basically, uh, present are of course the ever-infamous stare and door animations, the fixed camera angles, limited amounts of ammo. I, I don't know why, but I don't know if this is an easy mode or not, but you know, I'm finding handgun ammo by the plenty. Bear in mind though that in this game, from what I've seen, zombies take longer to kill with a handgun. And uh, well, the knife suddenly becomes more useful as you're about to see, really. I mean, watch and see this, because even I'm amazed by suddenly how epically epic the knife has become. So, here we go. I'm here, as Claire, with a knife. Normally, with this amount of zombies and a knife, I should be running away. Or should I? So I decide, you know what, I'll knife fight one, two, three. A uh, fifth zombie comes into view in about a minute or two. But, um, yeah, how well I do. Turns out, the knife's usefulness has suddenly gone up. So I'm here fighting them off, getting bitten, of course, as always. I don't know if she just has more health or not, but god damn it, this is different. So, um, yeah. Uh, by the way, the flaming zombie was the one who was in the front of that truck that had smashed through the wall, so bear that in mind. Uh, and all these other ones are ones that have come up from the grave. So of course, where when you push the zombie away, push it into another one, it makes it fall over. Uh, now, as any other Resident Evil player will know, as I've said, the knife usually has about squat usefulness. In Resident Evil 1 you just put it in the uh, supply case and leave it there, place it with a shotgun, or Richard's assault shotgun, or a gun, anything that's actually more useful. In this game, as like you can see, somehow I've managed to murder, I think, two of the zombies already using a knife. 
and it actually works pretty well. If you hit them enough before they get you, they fall over. Oh, a third one! Here comes the flaming zombie, who I think, because he's on fire, has more health. And, of course, the other corpse who won't, well, die. And it's just amazing, really. I've never seen the, this weapon ever get this useful, apart from in Umbrella Chronicles, where, you know, suddenly it's used as boosted up, because you can knife away crows, wasps, keep infinite leeches at bay just by swinging it. And, of course, Chris's grapple means you stab them in the head with it. But no. Uh off tangent really, but the fact is that I really, it's only a few seconds in, I've already enjo started to enjoy uh, Co-Veronica very much. I have have played a bit ahead, but the footage, uh, I need to do my other resi footage and commentary so I didn't have time to get that through, and it's already taken seven minutes to knife up these, you know, Jacobi and Ruffs. So, oh damn it, I didn't save! My knife fight! All oh, my knife fighting! Oh, God. Anyway, next time, of course, we play Co Veronica, I'll be going for a f I'll be showing you, well, the full introduction, the beginning, the cutscenes not cut out, let bear in mind they may be slow, and uh, I'll hopefully be defeating more zombies and using a gun this time and showing you how their resistance has increased to bullets, yet not to blades. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much all I've got time for. Well, I've actually got 28 seconds left, but you know. And uh, from now on, by the way, uh, we'll be continuing with Neon Genesis Evangelion and Resident Evil 1 Director's Cut Dual Shock Edition as part of my walkthroughs, and possibly Atom, if I can spare the time. But uh, if you've liked any of my videos or would like to request game that maybe I should play through, then don't hesitate to post me or tell me I have a stream, a YouTube stream, and a comments page. So, uh, until next time, till the date carved in my chest. Bye!